Top five exercises you need to master before you brave the barbell. The reasons why we chose these is because it's critical for you to lay a wide foundation so you could build a tall peak. A wide foundation is where we help you build strength endurance and resistance to injury. That is done by a lot of single arm and single leg movements. And it is also done by helping you perfect your technique, which is our goal for this short video. Let's get started. Okay, split squat. This is a very, very important exercise. You'll be doing this for the rest of your gym life. It's a stretch, it's an exercise, it's prehab, it's rehab, you name it. It hits the quads and the quads and also the quads. It's very important for ankle mobility and hip mobility. You need to master this. It trains the quadriceps primarily, but also hits the hamstrings and glutes. We like to start with front foot elevated. Jacqueline's gonna do that right now. She just puts her front foot on. What's important is that you have a hip width foot stance and you're not too narrow. She's gonna find a good spot for her back foot you want it a couple of foot lengths behind the hip. She's gonna initiate by traveling diagonally and driving her front knee forward. One of the most common things that you'll see mistake-wise is people will be traveling, number one, vertically, and also their stance will be too narrow width-wise or too narrow lengthwise, or possibly also too long lengthwise. We like to train it for as little as three sets or as many as six sets from five to 15 repetitions. Next up, the 45 degree back extension. This is a great one to train the hip hinge movement pattern and train your low back glutes and hamstrings. So Greg is gonna adjust the pad here. So the pad is just below his hips. He's gonna get in here. Once again, make sure the pad is below your hip bone. He's gonna hinge from the hip, sticking his butt out, keeping his back straight. Go ahead. He's gonna get down as far as possible, keeping his back straight, and he's gonna come back up. Perfect, easy peasy. Typically we do the back extension for three to four sets of six to 15 reps. Common mistakes, A, people short change the range of motion so they don't go all the way down. B, they round a lot in the low back, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but for this purpose of training the hip hinge pattern, we wanna try and keep the back straight. This is the single arm overhead dumbbell press. This hits the shoulder and the triceps. We wanna use it to even out discrepancies between left and right before you start either overhead barbell pressing or bench pressing. Jacqueline's gonna lift the dumbbell to her shoulder. She's gonna stagger her feet with the opposite side foot that the dumbbell is being held, foot forward. Yes, indeed. <laughs> If you're holding the dumbbell in your right hand, it's your left foot forward. If you're holding the dumbbell in your left hand, it's your right foot forward. She's gonna press straight up overhead, trying to get the biceps in line with her ear. So it's a nice straight line. The most common mistakes that people make here, they will be leaning back as they press because they have mobility restrictions here, or they'll be pressing forward again because of mobility restrictions. Typically for this one, we could go for as little as three sets and as many as six and anywhere from five to 15 repetitions. Next up is the step up. This is a great one to correct left and right discrepancies of strength between left and right legs. Compared to the split squat, the step up is more hip dominant. The higher the step, the more challenging it's gonna be. If you're new to step ups, we would recommend anywhere between like knee to mid shin is a good place to start. So Greg is gonna turn. Basically all he's gonna do is he's gonna pick a leg, He's gonna step up, he's gonna stand all the way up, and he's gonna come all the way back down. He's gonna to stick to that leg. He's gonna do as many reps as necessary on that one side before he switches to the other side. For the step up, you can do anywhere to three to five sets for five to 15 reps. Common mistakes that people do, they don't reach a full extension at the top. Uh, they also use their back leg a lot. So there's many different ways to do a step up, but here you can use, use the back leg a little bit, but primarily we wanna be focusing on pushing through that front leg. Next up, face pull. We use it to train the upper back and the external rotators. It's a great exercise before you train bench press because it prepares you for all of the negative effects of the bench press. First thing, you wanna make sure that the rope is set to about eye level. You're gonna grab it with both hands, thumbs facing forward. 
take a small step back. Jacqueline's gonna make sure that her hips and shoulders are in alignment. She doesn't want her hips further ahead than her shoulders because then it becomes an upright row. You're gonna turn your pinkies up and then you're gonna lead with your elbows and pull the center of the rope toward your eyes. One of the most common mistakes that we see here is people will pull with the elbows in first and then rotate up. We wanna avoid that. Elbows are always leading and going upward. Generally, face pulls are done three to four sets, eight to 15 repetitions. One disclaimer, if you have issues with these movements, reach out to us and we can offer you either a progression or a regression that'll help you more than the given movement. Also, the reps and sets that we've been given are, is a very wide variety because that's what periodization is. It's a wide variety of sets and repetitions. Usually we'll go three by 12 or four by 10 or five by six and, uh, and stick with that for the given time of your program. Next up is the step up. Ooh. Sorry, I gotta get all my jitters out. Mm -hmm. 